Well, I finally had time to completely wire the VFD the way that I wanted it and put in some remote switches for the control of the milling machine. So let's start from the beginning. Over here I have the emergency power shut off. Power runs up through this cable. It ends up up in the roof up there and it comes down via armor cable. I incorporated this loop in the main power feed just in case the machine were ever to tip over or possibly walk a little bit milling heavier pieces and parts she might want to vibrate one way or the other and I wouldn't want to tension that power cord to the point where it would short out so that's one protection and I actually have three stops on the machine one here one here the one inside the box and then within an arm's length the main one here it's 220 volts going into the box. And then inside the box, it's split into 110 volts because I power a low voltage circuit and a relay for emergency stop. And then another low voltage circuit to power the lighting on the buttons. And then the VFD itself in here. Eventually I'm going to put an acrylic window in here so you'll be able to see. But I gave some real thought to how much function I needed out of that box. It has so many programmable functions that it just didn't make sense to duplicate all of those functions for me. I didn't need a reverse. I'm tall enough I can reach the spindle itself for jogging to change gears. So all of those extra features that people add seemed like overkill to me. But I got some really good ideas from Kelly D. Klassen, and I just simplified them for myself. One of the things that I wanted was to be able to completely walk around the machine without having any cords or wires to trip over. It makes cleaning up oil spills and chips a whole lot easier. So here's how it works. I need to make sure that the emergency stops are both reset. That kicks on the circuit that powers up the VFD itself and my lighted switches. These are 22 millimeter latch switches, one for the start and stop, one for the coolant pump, which I don't own yet, and then the emergency stop, which shuts off the whole kit and caboodle. So once this thing's back on, the start and stop, the latch is one push on, the mill spins at the speed that the box is set to, it can mill, and when you're done, it's one push off, and it coasts to a stop. The other thing that I thought was fairly important, Mr. Klassen also had the idea of uh, your power feeds shutting off in the event that you push the emergency stop button. The reason is, if the bit stops cutting, you don't want the power feed continually feeding the stopped bit with hard work it'll break or shear the bit or ruin the piece that you're working on. So I decided to wire up another outlet box with a switched side that will shut off the coolant pump and the power feeds or feed if I ever get it working and a non-switch side so the DRO can continue to run and I won't have to reset my positions on the DRO. I also plan to add a spindle light at some point, some sort of gooseneck light that comes over here that gives me bright light right at the spindle. So that's the update. Oh, one other thing. I can still access most of these features inside the Hoffman box in the event that I want to change the, what I'm viewing on the VFD, select the display, or um, change the speed or change the direction. I don't have any left hand tooling so there's really no reason for me to have a reverse switch at the main control panel. Keeping it simple. Here's another view inside of the box. You can see that I've taken my 220 line and split it into two 110 lines and they join up later via a relay. The top 110 is unswitched and that powers the relay circuit just for the emergency shutoffs. The bottom one is switched and it powers up the main circuitry and the lighting for the 
for the control switches, the 22 millimeter control switches. And the reason I did that was if the lights are off, you know that the VFD itself is not powered. And if the lights are on, you should have power to the VFD because this relay runs on 12 volt circuit and closes to power the VFD. So let's talk about the relay. It's a 12 volt circuit. The coil is 12 volt DC. And when it closes, what happens is it takes the switched leg and the unswitched leg after they've been used for my other sources and rejoins them. And when the relay closes, it allows my 220 AC single phase to flow back into the top of the VFD. And once that happens, the magic of the VFD makes three phase which heads out to the motor. So that's, uh, that's how the relay is incorporated into the scheme. Well, if you read the instructions for the automatic Automation Direct's uh, VFD, you might think that all of your control lines need to be shielded. But I've really only got one control line that runs remotely, and that's its start and stop. It runs off a 28 volt or 24 volt DC provided by the Automation Direct boxes on board transformer. All the rest of my controls are all 12 volt and they're all DC so arguably they're very relatively uh, impervious to induction current. I don't see any chance where this machine would ever accidentally start or not perform the way that you wanted to because of interference or induction in the circuits. Plus two I kept careful to run my power circuitry in completely different cables and different routings than the control circuitry. Everything's inside of armor cables that passes through the machine and it gives me fairly nice clean lines around the machine to get up here. One last thing I'm still waiting for is the Asian manufactured box that will house these three buttons and I've got these temporarily labeled but the new box will have the actual labels of each pump function and the start function and the emergency stop function on an enclosed box and then this cable line will run into the back of the enclosed box so the lines will be nice and clear from the work table and that's about it thanks for watching